Hey folks, Justin here from St. Paul and Wild Prairie, Harley Davidson. Hey, I wanted to take a few minutes today and just show you some of the really cool new features about this new 2020 Road Glide Limited. We're really excited to have this bike in the lineup now. Um, it's the first year that they've offered the new Road Glide Limited and we're excited because you get a lot of new cool features on this bike uh, that you didn't get before, um, which inevitably is going to pay you back as the consumer uh, for those of you who are interested in this particular model. So the new Road Glide Limited, obviously I'll start off at the front of the bike here, comes with a really cool new shark nose fairing. Um, many of you hear people refer uh, to the Road Glide as the shark. That's where it gets it. It gets it from the shape of this, uh, the front fairing. Uh, some of the really important features about this new fairing is the fairing, and you can't see it on this video, but the fairing has some internal ventilation in it. And so what does that mean to you as the rider? And for those of you who have ridden um, a Road Glide before, they offered this new um, ventilation in the front fairing and after. One of the most um, obvious things that you're going to notice right away is the ventilation now gives you a balance on the motorcycle when you're riding it down the road at 70, 75 miles an hour. Why do you need that? So you need that balance of the air front and back of the motorcycle so that when you're riding it and your head, you know, is literally sitting somewhere right in this area, it eliminates all that buffeting that if you don't have some balance of air pressure on the front and the back of the fairing, you get this, you get, you can feel it. It'll make your glasses shake. If you wear a helmet, it'll make your helmet shake. When you're going down the road, it's, it's very irritating and it's very fatiguing. So this new ventilation system has basically eliminated that. It's a real awesome new feature of this new fairing. Um, I really like it. I've been riding road glides for quite some time now. Definitely noticed a huge difference when they offered that new fairing. Before they did that, I probably went through, I don't know, 10 or 15 different windshields trying to eliminate that and balance that pressure front to back. But now this new um, ventilation system has eliminated that. So that's pretty awesome. So a few of the other cool features on the new Road Glide Limited. Uh, and I think this is important because if, if, you, if you haven't had one of the newer bikes, um, it has the one touch bag openers on them. So all you do literally is you just lift this little lever right here um, and the bag opens up. It's really simple. Um, it's not like the old style ones where you actually had to lift this up, pull the bag out, put the bag back on. It was really cumbersome. So literally one finger and you can open this bag and you've got some tremendous storage here um, in the new Road Glide Limited bag. So that's pretty exciting. Some of the other things that you'll notice on the 2020 Road Glide Limited is it's sporting some new wheels. And the new wheels are 18s front and rear. They're the new, they call it the Slicer 2 is actually the name of the wheel. So it's got a really sporty front wheel on it now. Uh, gives it a really nice look. And you know, the really cool thing that they offered this year that we had a lot of customers asking us about last year was, do they offer it in black? And as you can see here, the whole bike, uh, they basically blacked this out. So now we're gonna get the question, do they offer it in chrome? And the cool thing about the 2020 is Harley Davidson has this bike in both black um, accents and chrome accents. So on the black accents, you'll notice your engine guards up here, your bars, your levers, your rear bag guards, your rear tour pack rack, all your little hardware, hinges, things like that, um, footboards, uh, brake, uh, brake pedal, um, rear footboards, uh, exhaust. Uh, it's all blacked out now. And the cool thing is, is you can get it in chrome too. So those of you who are kind of old school cool and you want chrome, uh, you can still get this in chrome, which is a really nice um, option to it also. And the colors are always spectacular. So this particular year, this is the red and black two-tone, which is pretty, uh, pretty awesome. Uh, we've gotten a lot of rave reviews. Can't hardly keep them in stock. So um, real popular color this year. So we're really excited to have um, the, the options now for black or chrome, which is really cool. The particular seat height of this new model 
is 27.2 inches. So um, I'm going to cover a couple other things that I think um, are really important when it comes to thinking about the seat height in this also. But they've got the seat height down to a level now where um, whether you're vertically challenged or you're tall, it's got a great uh, seat height for you to keep you comfortable. And when you stop at a stop sign, you still got uh, bent legs uh, for the most part, and you got good control of your bike when you stop. So that's pretty exciting. One of the other uh, important things I think to talk about is the uh, single spar touring frame. All right. So when we talk about the single spar touring frame, you can't really see it. <clears throat> it's not sexy. Uh, it doesn't give it any kind of cool factor. But why do I bring up the single spar uh, touring frame? I bring it up because what it really helps with on these touring models is it gives you a more rigid frame. And what does that mean to you as the rider? What's in it for me, so to speak? Well, when you make these frames a little more rigid, the cool thing about that is it improves the control and handling significantly. So I want you to envision yourself going in a big, long, sweeping curve and think about whether you're in a Corvette, so to speak, or you're in, say, an old 1975 Impala. And obviously that new Corvette's going to take that curve really um, in control, and whereas that old Impala with the old-style frame and old-style suspension, etc., you know, it has a lean to it. Well, Harley in the new uh, frame system really has done a great job of making that frame a lot more rigid so it gives you way more control when you get into those uh, nice long sweeping curves that we all enjoy so much. You just feel like you have so much more control of the motorcycle. One of the other questions I get a lot is uh, kind of the whole debate of road glide versus street glide front fairing or the FLH style front fairing versus the FLT front fairing. And so let me talk about that for just a second. I've been in the business now for 25 plus years. So I date back um, way back to when they had the tour, the, they had the old FL real T front fairing tour glide. And back in the day, that old tour glide had a real snub nose, okay? It uh, wasn't real particularly uh, friendly to the eyes. Let's just put it that way. And um, Harley Davidson actually scrapped that model years back and then brought it back and has redesigned this fairing a few times now and given it a much sleeker uh, front style, which is really cool. But the real thing that you're going to notice is this front fairing actually mounts to the frame, okay? So this thing mounts to the frame, and when you turn your front wheels, the front fairing doesn't obviously turn with your front wheel when you turn, all right? And so when you do that, you take the weight off of your front fork tubes, all right? So you're, you're literally pulling, you know, I would say somewhere upwards of maybe 60 to 80 pounds, maybe even more off of your front fork tubes and you're literally mounting it to the frame now, all right? And so when you're going down the road and you get into a curve, um, it gives you a different ride. And so to sit here and tell you that one is right and one is wrong, I would never do that because everybody likes a different style of ride for their own reasons. However, my particular riding style, I prefer the road glide and the way the road glide and is mounted to the front frame, I like that ride better. That's my own personal opinion. And you'll have, you know, for every one opinion like that, you're going to have another opinion right beside it that says they like uh, the FLH style front fairing. So it's a big debate, and I get it. But realistically, um, my recommendation to you is to take it for a ride and uh, see which one you like better. And uh, I would recommend that you buy the one that, that you feel fits you better and your riding style better because in the end um, that's what's going to be the best value to you as a consumer. So as we kind of go around the bike, um, obviously the big thing that I want to cover today is what we call the Milwaukee 8 engine. 
all right? And I just want to cover a few real key elements to the Milwaukee 8 motor that I think is important for everybody to know about on the bike when you're making a decision about what motorcycle you want or inevitably, um, you know, um, what you're looking for out of the engine, okay? So a few real key features about the new Milwaukee 8 motor and how did it get its name, Milwaukee 8, stands for eight valves. That's four valves per cylinder. So um, Harley-Davidson went to that design for a host of different reasons, but some of the real key reasons are to improve the horsepower and torque of the engine. Um, and you're definitely gonna notice that coming off of a twin cam, there's a significant improvement in horsepower and torque, all right? So what's the difference between those two? Well, when you grab onto that throttle at low RPMs and you roll into that throttle, torque is what you feel. Torque sits you back in the seat and it literally gives you that G-force uh, back in that seat. And the new, this one comes with a 114 inch twin cooled uh, Milwaukee 8 engine and we'll go over that here in a second. But this particular um, motor actually is 1,868 cc's for those of you who are trying to kind of understand the difference between 114 cubic inches and what does that mean in cc's. And the big thing to remember about this particular motor is it runs about 122 foot-pounds of torque. All right, so as the rider, when you start getting up into 120 plus foot-pounds of torque, um, that's going to give you a real nice roll-on feel on this motorcycle um, when you start giving it throttle. So it also will help you from having to downshift near as much. So I think it improves the overall rideability of the bike, which I think is really um, an exciting feature of the new Milwaukee 8 motor. And you'll notice that I said twin-cooled. So what does twin-cooled mean on this? So up here in this particular bike where you used to find compartments and you can kind of see a little venting in here is this bike is both radiator fluid and oil cooled. So inevitably what that does is it helps pull a lot of that heat away from the engine and the motor runs significantly cooler than what you would have had on a twin, K, a, a twin cam and pre twin cam engine with a Harley Davidson motorcycle. And for those of you who have been in stop and go traffic or you're in a big city, you know what that means to you because obviously on an air cooled engine, uh, the cooler you can make it run, um, the better off that it is. So the new twin cooled engine runs significantly um, cooler than the old style only air cooled engine. And inevitably that provides you with a much more comfortable ride on this motorcycle. So real exciting upgrade um, to this particular engine. So some other really cool features in my opinion um, on the new Milwaukee 8 engine is there's less maintenance to it. And so it's basically an adjustable free valve train, all right, which is cool. So the valve lash is set at the, at the factory. You don't have to keep having to take it in and getting valves adjusted, et cetera. So that's pretty exciting in my opinion. Um, fewer moving parts uh, in, the, in the engine, so that gives you less engine noise and a quieter ride. So on this particular bike, um, we kind of like to hear our exhaust. That's kind of our DNA in the Harley-Davidson world. But what you don't want to hear is all the noise, valve train noise coming out of the engine. So the first time you ride a Milwaukee 8, you're going to notice right away coming off of a twin, can, twin cam that it sounds totally different. All right, the first time that I rode a Milwaukee 8, it was a really weird experience for me because I'm, I'm so used to, and my ears are so trained to hear that engine noise off of a twin cam um, and previous that it was really unique. Um, I can honestly say immediately I fell in love with it because now if I want to listen to the radio or I ride particularly with a helmet, okay, and so... I wear a helmet and I also run the 30K intercom system in it that Harley Davidson sells. So you don't have to turn your intercom system way up um, in order to, you know, 
hear your radio or hear your passenger or what have you. And the new Harley Davidson 30K intercom system, that's a whole nother video in itself, but it's pretty awesome. So the quieter engine, in my opinion, um, is a great value to all, of, to all of us as riders in the Milwaukee 8 motor. So the next thing I want to talk about is really the smoothness of the engine when you fire the motor up. So what does that mean? This new motor is actually counterbalanced internally and it has the vibration isolation rubber mount motor system in it. So internally it's got a counterbalance that eliminates 75% of that shake that we've had in the chassis at idle previously. Okay, that's a big number, 75%. Plus, you still have your rubber mounted motor. So, when you get up to highway speeds and you're going down the road, you've got this incredibly smooth feel to this engine. And inevitably, that takes a lot of the buzz out of the chassis. So, when you're holding on to these bars for a significant period of time, you don't want buzz coming through the chassis because buzz gives you fatigue in your hands and in your elbows and in your shoulders. And back in the day, that's the difference between. Um, having to get off of your motorcycle and take a break or riding for really significant periods of time um, and really feeling little fatigue whatsoever when you go on those really long trips. So the counterbalance and the rubber mounted motor um, brings a huge, huge advantage to this motorcycle over virtually any of the other touring bikes um, that are out there um, in the competitive world to Harley Davidson right now. So. That's pretty exciting. Um, it also has a redesigned exhaust. Harley spent a lot of time and a lot of energy on heat dissipation. And so it came out with a, a redesigned exhaust system that also pulls more heat away from the rider and the passenger and gives you that uh, cooler ride because typically we're riding our bikes in hotter weather. And so um, that's a really neat feature of the new twin cam engine. The whole design of it had that in mind as far as keeping it cooler and more comfortable for the rider and the passenger um, to ride this thing. So one other really neat thing uh, with the single cam engine now, which was important to me, um, was the single cam engine now gives you a much richer exhaust sound, okay? So when this thing is running, you're gonna literally hear a much richer sound and with the quieter engine and the richer sound of the single cam engine now which dates back into the evolution and the shovel head and everybody always says oh you know you're never going to get a, a bike to sound as cool as the old pan head or the old shovel head um, I wouldn't necessarily disagree with that however um, you're getting really close again with the single cam engine and the new uh, Milwaukee 8 and you got new technology and that is a huge advantage over um, what we used to ride. Let's just put it that way. So let's also talk a little bit while we're talking about the engine about the new and improved ergonomics of the Milwaukee 8 engine. All right. So what does that mean? What are new and improved ergonomics? So Harley Davidson um, on the other side of the motor actually put a slimmer primary on the bike. So when you go to put your feet down, um, the primary is not pushing your leg out on the motorcycle near as much as it was on a twin cam bike. So you basically have a narrower motor, okay, feel that gives you a more comfortable feel. And on top of that, they also basically um, put a lower profile air cleaner set up on it too. So when you get on here and you put your leg up here, you're not feeling that on the inside of your calf down there bumping into this air cleaner all the time. So those two pieces alone, I think, gives you a nicer, more comfortable feel when you're sitting on the bike. And um, inevitably, um, if, you're, if you're shorter, um, definitely gives you a nicer feel when you go to put your feet down on it. It will allow the bike to fit more uh, different st statures, let's put it that way. So um, now, <clears throat> another real key element till the Milwaukee 8 engine is the new assist and slip clutch. All right. So the new assist and slip assist and slip clutch 
basically gives you a reduced clutch pull, all right? So it's easier to pull that clutch in and out. So basically, you don't end up getting near the fatigue in your hands on a really long ride, okay? Makes it smoother, so when you go to let the clutch out, definitely has a smoother feel to it. And on top of that, obviously, with this new setup and the, and the better technology, um, gives you that diminished likelihood of chirp in your rear wheel when you go to downshift. So um, any of you have ridden before, when you go to downshift, um, oftentimes you'll hear this chirp in the rear wheel where your rear wheel's catching and going, er, er, you know. So this new clutch um, dissipates that quite tremendously. So the new clutch system is really, um, I think, one of the nicer features on here. It's kind of a little bit of an unsung feature, but when you're riding it, you definitely feel it right away. And of course, the hydraulic clutch system is a really smooth setup on the Harley-Davidson motorcycle. So um, it's got the same lower center of gravity, which is really critical. You know, so I think that's one of the nicest features about the Harley-Davidson motorcycle is, um, you know, sometimes people might get intimidated by the weight until you actually sit on it. And when you sit on it, you'll notice right away that it has a really, really low center of gravity down here. So the bike is really easy to pick up and handle and control. So um, that's one of the nice things about it. So don't ever, in the back of your mind, let that, I get to you, go sit on one, and you'll see right away how easy it is to pick it up off the kickstand, and you sit on it, and you feel that low center of gravity, and it's really, it's really an awesome setup, so I think that's important. So I want to get into what I think next is um, one of my favorite features anyway on the motorcycle, and that's called the Re reflex-linked Brembo brake system. And I get pretty excited when I start talking about this system because, quite frankly, it's my favorite feature on the whole bike, and it's the best in the touring lineup, hands down, period. So if you're looking at a, a new touring bike, in my opinion, it's kind of a no-brainer. Um, I know I'm a little jaded because here I am at a Harley dealership, but their braking system is second to none. And I think your brakes are one of the most critical elements on the motorcycle um, for obvious reasons. And so the new reflex linked Brembo brake system, and you mentioned, you, you notice I mentioned Brembo. Brembo is well known as one of the leading best brands of braking manufacturers in the industry. They build uh, braking systems for race cars and all kinds of real high performance stuff. So Harley Davidson has uh, Brembo brakes on it, which is really cool. And the reflex linked portion of it, I want to kind of walk you through that. So when you're out on your motorcycle and you go to take off, under five miles an hour, both of your brakes front and rear run independently of one another. So you push on the rear and the rear works. You pull on the front and the front works. All right. It is what it is. All right. Other than the ABS still works under five miles an hour. Not likely to engage, but it still works. So what happens when you cross that five mile per hour threshold? And once you cross that five mile an hour threshold, this motorcycle has some really incredible technology on it with the braking that I think is really crucial uh, for everybody to understand and understand the advantages that it gives you on this motorcycle versus any other brand of touring motorcycle in the marketplace. And that's the linked portion. So when you cross that five mile an hour threshold, um, it basically senses uh, the motorcycle's needs front and rear, and it gives you a much better stability on the bike, all right? Because what it's doing is sensing all the time, basically, um, and modulating uh, to a point what your braking needs are front and rear. So in a basically a, a situation where you need some urgent braking or you get out into um, a curve and you need to use your braking or what have you, um, if you 
immediately go to grab your front brake, this motorcycle, before you hit your rear brake, this motorcycle will apply the appropriate pressure to your rear also. So if you grab the front, it will apply rear brake pressure also. Or if you grab the rear, it will modulate and apply front brake pressure for you also. Improving your stopping power significantly. And that is the real key part. You don't ever want to think about that, but when you really need that urgent braking um, that a motorcycle can need at some at some times. Um, it's nice to know that you've got the best braking system um, in the industry right now for touring bikes on the on the Harley Davidson touring bike with the reflex linked Brembo brake system. And I really think that it's crucial that you really think about that um, when you're in the market looking for a motorcycle, whether it be an older bike or whether you get a newer bike with this new technology on it because to me um, you can only need it one time and it will inevitably pay you back in spades so I think that's really crucial so um, it proportionally um, will apply itself front and rear and make this motorcycle as safe as possibly can be out on the road so one of the next things I want to talk about is the suspension system alright so the responsive front and rear suspension system on a Harley Davidson motorcycle is really pretty cool. And the rear suspension has a nice um, hand controlled uh, adjustment on the back that really will allow you to adjust your preload um, according to whether you're riding two up, whether you're riding fully loaded, or whether you're riding two up and fully loaded. And there's some really neat scientific um, little um, exercises you can go through that will help you dial that in to the exact right preload tension that you need to give you the best ride possible on the motorcycle. And that actual um, formula is on the new HD Connect system, which I'll cover here uh, when we get a little bit further into the video. But the new um, suspension system is a Showa dual bending fork uh, suspension system all right and it's got some really cool cartridge dampening systems in it and without getting into all the technological elements of that what does that mean to you as a rider all right well one of the most important things I mentioned already which is the adjustable ability for you to control the uh, preload or the the tension of that suspension in the motorcycle to give you the best ride and the rest of it's automatic so it's automatic because it has valving inside the suspension um, that moves the fork oil around according to what the motorcycle needs and what's going on with the rider at that moment in time and it gives you a tremendous ride on the Harley Davidson touring bike and Showa is one of the best suspension manufacturers in the business uh, they make a lot of really really cool suspension stuff and so it's important for you to know that Harley's got a great suspension system and it's basically um, uh, got some really cool controllability and and automation both that's going to give you a great ride on this motorcycle regardless of of the needs that you have on the bike at that moment in time. So the next element I want to talk about is basically what we call the Boombox GTS infotainment system. And I know that's a mouthful, but the Boombox GTS infotainment system is the new control system up here um, that has your radio, your nav, and your phone all built into it. And Harley-Davidson has what I think is the best um, system that any motorcycle offers on it right now when it comes to um, simplicity and technology, and I'm going to tell you why. There's some really cool new stuff. It, it Just to get started with, it's 25 watts per channel now, so it's got plenty of volume in there if you like to really crank it up. Um, and it also has the ability to add more speakers and more amps to it too so if you really like the whole neighborhood to shake 
when you go through it. It's got some really, really um, awesome uh, power to it that comes factory, all right? So it also has Bluetooth hands-free capabilities with voice command. So um, that's pretty awesome. And think about that if you wear a helmet and you use the um, intercom system in there, literally you've got some pretty awesome control um, of your infotainment system uh, through that voice command, which is, which is really cool. Um, it also has a USB plug-in right here in this particular door on this motorcycle, which is nice. Um, you can literally plug your phone right into it, slide it right into this slot right here, and it will initiate Apple CarPlay. So those of you who are familiar with Apple CarPlay on the unit, um, you know how nice of a feature that is and the control that you have through Apple CarPlay. So it has that feature built right into it, which is really pretty awesome. The other neat thing um, up here is the new Gorilla Glass, which is new in 2019. But this new Gorilla Glass that it uses for its display has touchscreen technology, so you can touch it. It has pinch technology, which is cool. So in the nav, you can, uh, you can zoom out or zoom in to your mapping system. And it has glove technology. So if you have your gloves on, you literally can touch it with your gloves, and it'll function accordingly. So those are all real great features of controlling this from the glass and how you touch it and control it from there. It also, um, Harley-Davidson simplified it in the software system to have three simple icons on there. It has your nav, it has your music, and it has your phone, okay? Really the three things that you need the most, that's the three buttons that are up on it all the time. So you can control it by touching this, or you can control it with the standard buttons that you've been used to um, over the years right here uh, on the control uh, switch housings on both sides. So it has a lot of flexibility, which I think makes it um, another cool element to the whole system and makes it a lot easier um, to use uh, for you as the rider. So there's some great videos online that goes into much more detail about the Boombox GTS. But on top of what I just covered for you today, it also has some of the um, engine information in there also that you can go into. So you can touch it and go into some of the other cool measurements that it's, that it's uh, monitoring in your engine also, which I think is pretty awesome. So the next thing I want to cover is optional in 2020 um, on the touring bikes. And this new optional feature is called RDRS, um, Reflex Defense, the, the Reflex Defensive Rider System, okay? And it's very complex, and I don't want to sit here and take you into the weeds because that's not the purpose of the video. The purpose of our video today is to give you some high-level feature advantage benefits of the new 2020 Road Glide Limited. So when you're considering a new motorcycle, you're educated and you have a good idea whether or not it'll meet your needs or not. But the new RDRS is an option on this motorcycle. And it's basically a collection of new technologies designed to match motorcycle performance to available traction, deceleration, and braking. Probably the easiest way to put it, okay? So it's really, to desi it's really designed to help the rider in both accelerating and braking um, and especially in adverse and urgent conditions, control the bike better, all right? So it gives you much more control of your motorcycle, the RDRS system does. So it's got traction control, it's, sens it's sensing all the time, wet conditions, is it feeling the rear tire start to slip? Um, is it feeling the rear tire start to grab? And 
and it's controlling that power electronically um, to your motorcycle to keep that motorcycle more stable and inevitably keep you safer. So it's basically sensing the wheel slip um, all the time for you, okay? Which is really, a, I think, a cool deal, um, especially in slick conditions. But the other really cool little element, and I know I'm kind of abbreviating this, and Harley on their website has some really cool videos on harley-davidson.com about the real complexities of the new RDRS system. But the one thing you're going to notice right away that I think is really cool, when you're stopped at a stoplight or a stop sign and you squeeze the front brake in, it locks your brake for you for that moment in time until you give it gas again. So your, your bike's not rocking forward or backward. You can let off of the brake. So it's almost kind of like having a temporary parking brake, which is really cool. So it's got a really neat, um, a real neat feel to it. If you had to grab something out of your pocket or grab your glove or something, um, there's a lot of things that you might need that for, but um, it's basically um, what they call vehicle hold control, all right? So that's a neat feature of it also. The Rogue Glide Limited also comes with heated grips, which is pretty cool. Um, so it gives you a lot more comfort from that perspective. And as we covered today, I mean, those are a lot of the high level feature advantage benefits of the Rogue Glide Ultra. And um, obviously we have a host of trained professionals in our dealerships that are always welcome to take whatever time is needed to really give you a thorough orientation of whatever motorcycle you're interested in. And of course, get you out on a test ride and see it and make sure that that's the motorcycle um, that fits your needs the best. And a few things I want to kind of close on that I think is important when you're buying a new bike, in my opinion, the one feature advantage benefit that Harley Davidson has over all other brands is a simple little feature we call resale. So when you're looking at a new motorcycle and I get this feedback from time to time from customers on the showroom floor regarding um, the price of a new Harley Davidson motorcycle, some people look at that price and they say to themselves, oh, that's really expensive. Or this brand over here is a little bit cheaper. Okay, I want you to really think about a couple things. And we talk about this a lot internally, and some people learn this lesson the hard way out there. But the resale value of a Harley Davidson, there's nothing better in the entire industry right now than this bike. Okay, so when you're looking at a bike and you're looking at the price, and let's say it's $2,000 higher or $4,000 higher or whatever, do a little bit of research and look at what a competitive brand to Harley Davidson is valued one year after ownership. That's when you really find the value of buying a Harley Davidson motorcycle. Because let's just use some round numbers. If you buy a new Harley, let's say it's $30,000 or $20,000, and you ride it for a year or two, and you go to trade it in, and it hasn't depreciated at the same level of some of the other brands in the marketplace that are trying like crazy to compete with Harley. Think about it from this perspective. I paid $30,000 for my bike. It depreciated in that time frame $5,000. The overall cost to me was $35,000. All right? That's really what you need to be thinking about. You buy brand X and you pay $30,000 or $28,000, and let's say it depreciates by 50%, okay? Because that's what we're seeing a lot right now in the marketplace. A lot of these other brands, the depreciation factor is so much higher that we get people bringing them in a year or two into ownership to trade them into us, and the value that is really dictated by NADA and National Power Sports Auction of these motorcycles, not us, we don't sit around and decide, oh, we're going to pay this for that and this for that. 
the market and the demand for that product used is really inevitably what dictates that used value. And we always try to be super fair because we're a huge used bike dealership. Nobody pays more money for used bikes than we do at our dealerships. Um, it's, we, we, we sell a ton of pre-owned motorcycles. We love that business because not everybody can swing a payment on a new bike. But if that bike started at 30, depreciated 50%, which we see a lot, now all of a sudden the, the, the cost of ownership to you is not $30,000, it's $45,000. And then that's the moment in time when a lot of the consumers get real frustrated about their decision to buy those other brands. And I think that's really crucial for you to really think about and remember is think about the overall value of that purchase, okay? And think about what's that gonna provide me back? Aside from what I think is superior technology, I think the best brand in the business, um, that's all great stuff, but that's gonna hit the old pocketbook. So when you come in to trade it, if you have an off brand that you purchased new for whatever reason, um, just remember that. The depreciation factors are huge in a lot of those other brands in the marketplace um, that are really trying to compete with Harley Davidson. They're struggling out there to do that. And oftentimes, so I've had a lot of people who will inevitably try to take their bike and try to sell it back to the dealer they bought it from. And that particular dealer, you know, they come back and, and they want to give them that value that is the current market value of it also. And oftentimes that really burns the customer in the end. They get upset. They come to Harley Davidson, they buy a Harley, and they never go back to another brand again. I'd like to save you that pain and agony, okay? So really think about that. Any of our team is always willing and able to try to talk you through that, and uh, we're always honest with you about it. We try our best to try to educate and help our fellow riders because that's really and truly what we're here for in our dealerships. One of the other things that I think is super crucial to think about is the number of dealerships in the marketplace if you get out on the road and you have an issue these things are awesome but they're mechanical just like everything else they need maintenance just like everything else but if you're out on the road there's way more harley davidson dealerships than there are any of these other off-breed brands and so if you ever need something the likelihood of you being able to get it um, out on the road is much higher so and oftentimes your level of service is much higher. Uh, you've got a dealership who spends time and energy most of the time, most do, not all of them, um, trying to train their staff to deliver a good experience, okay? But the number of dealers across the country is another really critical part. As I mentioned before, we love trades. So nobody pays more money for trades in the market than we do, we're really aggressive. Um, if you want to trade your motorcycle in, regardless of the brand, um, we're, we're really fair and we sell a lot of pre-owned motorcycles and we have a lot of people looking for pre-owned motorcycles all the time. So we're very aggressive uh, when we put trade deals together um, for our fellow riders. So that's an important thing for you to know. Lastly, the last thing I want to cover is oftentimes, um, sometimes the first time, uh, the first thing a lot of people want to talk about, which is financing. We have a host of different lenders in our dealerships that we can tap into. The number one is Harley Davidson Finance, okay? And Harley Davidson Finance finances motorcycles. That's what they do. And they are very aggressive in the marketplace. So the majority of our customers that are coming in and doing business with us are financing their bike through Harley Davidson Finance because their interest rates are great, their terms are great, their uh, loan amount that they're willing to give is great. Oftentimes, if you want to add a few accessories to it or what have you, they'll let you throw that into the loan, um, just like they will with their extended service plan or our VIP maintenance plans. Um, so that's all real awesome. And it just makes it easier to be an owner. And so, and for those of you who have different credit unions that you work with or what have you, um, well, we have those set up in our dealerships too. So we're a licensed lender for almost every credit union in the marketplace. Um, and, and we have some other lenders that we can tap into too. So whether you have good credit, tier A credit, your 850 score, or you're a 450 score, 
Uh, most of the time we have financing options that we can talk about for you uh, that are the best in the market. And we have full-time finance um, professionals in our stores uh, willing and able at a moment's notice to cover that with you and make sure that you get the best, uh, not just um, the best financing, but the best terms that are available in the marketplace. So again, Justin here, St. Paul, Wild Prairie, Harley-Davidson here in the Twin Cities metro area. Um, we're excited to do business uh, with you. We're here to serve our fellow riders. That's you. And we hope that you know that we're here for you anytime you need us. Pick the phone up. Better yet, stop in and see us. Come in and check the product out. Whether you want to learn how to ride with our riding academy, um, we got the best riding academy instructors in the business, or you want to rent a bike, we've got rentals. Uh, we're a licensed rental dealer also, so you can come in and check them out. Um, we are here to take care of you. Don't forget that. Thanks again for watching. Hope you found some good value in this. Um, you can reach out to any of our team or me at any time uh, because that's what we're here to do. We're here to serve you.